I don't have any before and after. Oh, 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 my bad, bro, bro. I had to cut the camera. You good, bro? <laughs> my, my bad. I was trying to be dramatic. You good? Let me see. Oh, I'm hurt. Oh, my neck. My back. My neck and my back. Oh, I want 150000 But we can start out of court right now for 20 bucks. Man, get your ass up. It's about six, four to six bolts. One of my guys took it off and it did a mm -hmm. great job. It's off. Uh, but uh, got the bed off. And now we're going to be shooting a frame. He's going with some 24s or 26s, one of those. Either way, you're going to be able to see that frame. So we want to go ahead and shoot it all black. I was want to shoot it red, but we would have only been able to do uh, the back half red because obviously the motor's up there. So we're just going to shoot it black we're gonna clean it up we'll throw some clear coat now we're going to do about two coats of the 8555 ebony black and then we'll put about two coats of clear on here right now i got my dv1 no look this ain't the dv1 i disrespected it this is the sada uh, 5500 um the jet x 5500 this thing is a beast definitely a great gun for the job because it's going to be pushing out a lot of paint when i had a fan and fluid all the way <laughs> It now it's two things y'all know i like to talk i like to talk disregard my my uh my ventilation system yeah we paid big bread for that anyway i like to talk so we're gonna chop it up got the two pay uh two uh two coats of base laid down with our um solder of course you can't really tell the quality of it being laid down um because we got a a scaly frame. Nah. Now you could have we could have went the whole nine yards and sanded the frame, got it all super smooth and buttery. But this was a situation where I'm not charging. I was just like, well, the bed's coming off. We might as well just go ahead and shoot it black. So we just shot it black. Now, if this would have been a situation, of course, like, hey, like I want my frame smooth, spotless, with wild wham, then yeah, we would have talked numbers. But look how look look how good it looked. This is what I mean by I thought it was a reaction. I'm like, that looks like a paint reaction. Hold on. But I guess it's just 
surface, surface rust, um, just scars and scrapes to the frame. There we go. It's black though. It's black. We got it black. Thing sharp. Looking good. We still got to clear it. So we're going to get ready to uh, clear it within the next five minutes. And then, shoot, we'll cut y'all back on. Man. Let's get it. All right, look. On the back of this, it does say, it does state that you can shoot um, clear coat through here as well. Now, that's what we're going to do. I'm not going to use my Iwata because the Iwata, it, it <laughs> I don't know the correct terminology, but I just, the best way I can put it is, um, it lays down com like extremely flat. It's, it lays down extremely flat. It itemizes great. Um, I mean, it damn near leaves absolutely no orange peel when you have a flat, smooth surface. This is not a flat, smooth surface, so that's not the time that I want to spend on a frame. You know what I'm saying? So this right here, we're going to go ahead and in this situation, we'll go ahead and spray the clear coat through the through the base gun. It's gonna come out a lot thicker. It's gonna come out thicker than than it normally would spray. That does push out a lot of a lot of uh, clear coat. It does, but it lays down. It's it's like really meant for a flat surface. Now the DV1, me personally, I feel like it doesn't even compete to how flat the Iwata sprays. The Iwata, uh, the Iwata, um, you damn near you damn near gotta take your time. But it does push out paint if that makes sense. It's like a I, I don't know. It's I haven't fully I haven't fully um like really grasped on how the Iwata WS4 I just love it. The finish is amazing. Now the DV1 is probably a little bit quicker. It'll get the job done a little bit faster, but this will even be even more fast because I think it's a 1.3 tip on here as well. So it'll just lay down really thick. And uh, yeah, man, it's gonna it's gonna get the job done right now. We just kind of letting it sit till we uh till it's time to spray it's probably been about a few minutes since i got off the base so we'll spray the base and the clear through the through the um 5500 and then we'll we'll initially save the eye water for like i ain't gonna lie like my candies like if it's a candy paint job if it's going like ah like hey we need this like butter then yeah we'll use the eye water and then if it's like a you know a scuff and shoot insurance job something like that you know, we'll just throw, we'll just grab the grab the DV1, hurry up, get it over with with some high quality, uh, with a high quality finish. But I think that Iwata is a great, a great, a great example of when to use uh, the um, the Iwata. If I had to pick and choose, now of course you got some that say, well, why don't you just always use the Iwata on any project? Yeah, some some you know, hey, some projects some projects didn't pay for that. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> nah, I ain't gonna do y'all like that. But, all right, man, let's go ahead and get ready to spray it. All right, let's get
little quick little job on the Camaro front end, little front end damage. Got them sprayed up last night. Well, early this morning, about 4 a.m. The goal was to not not to have to color set and buff uh, color set and buff it, but uh, we got a little bit of trash in. The, we got a little too much trash in it. These are water. This is from my hose, my, uh, my line. I empty my tank every morning, every night. I drain my line. I empty my tank. I empty both of them. But for some reason, it still it still gets some uh, water in the lines for some reason. Oh my bad. All right, we're letting this dry. Hit three coats. I made too much clear, so I went ahead and hit, hit it with three coats. Um, so yeah, got everything gloss black. We'll roll this bad boy outside, let the sun bake it for, for about a day, a good good six hours. I think we got about six hours left, six hours left of um, daylight, so. Yes, sir. There you have it. We got the, the frame painted. Got as far as we could with it. And then what we'll probably do is since it's black, it won't be. Now, when I talked about the red, the black will be much easier, much unison, much simple, simpler. So we'll take the wheel off and then get as far as we can forward. Took all the wires. Now, like I said, I could have done it with the red, but I would have put too much time into it um doing it a different color i probably would have had to spend an extra hour hour and a half of preparation to do a complete color change on it so um stuff like that i would have shot it red if it wasn't for the extra but um but we gotta we gotta get the job done can't waste too much time it's not fair to the other customers that's waiting stuff like that you know i gotta think about all of that um back to my previous videos what i was saying was just like yo like i would love to spend and take the time if i were, if i had it financially and if i if i knew uh i didn't have a, a bunch of other cars lined up already on the schedule then yeah i'll just take my time with it and every time i look at the car I'll probably never leave if, if i really could put my full entire potential on it but hey man we we getting the job done though man we're trying to we'll do some quality work so i use the finish one clear coat um, you can get that about a hundred, a hundred and something online. I used to pay 175 until I found a, a plug, found somebody else, Aaron Williams. They rock with the kids, so I've been getting mine for about a hundred, 120 bucks a gallon. It comes with the hardener and of course the clear coat. So lays down great. It, it cuts great when you color stand and buff it. Does a phenomenal job. Haven't had any issues. It's pretty durable. It doesn't fade on me or anything like that. Um, I would like to try some new clear, um, but I rather I still want to stay around that price range. But let me know. I heard of the wet, wet and Grant Seven and stuff like that. I will expand my horizon eventually, but right now I'm just I'm barely getting by. So uh, yeah, hey man, y'all hit that subscribe button, man. We gonna probably depending on how I'm feeling, I might just end this video now, um, or I might just pick back up on it on the next on the next. I don't know if we might. We, yeah, we might just turn this one around and go ahead and knock out the front i should have did them both at the same time but man i was just trying to hurry up and get some stuff sprayed i've been in the office all day so um this was the quickest thing so we'll, we'll probably just turn it around and hurry up and mask up the front and shoot the front so yeah i might have wasted a little time doing it this way but at least the back half is painted i didn't even think i was gonna get that painted today <laughs> all right so well i guess i'll cut y'all back on right now we're doing a color sand and buff and i'm not gonna do too much of a how-to video because i don't like doing it uh, I don't even like buffing, so it's an insurance job. This car got walked around, as we've seen in the last few videos, probably talked about it. Uh, we went ahead and color sanded and buffed it, but it was still, we put out in the sun and still seen some scratches, and we're like, damn, like, we seen, seen the scars and stuff like that. Um, we got it pretty flat. Um, of course, you got, we, yeah, we still had stuff to do. We just trying to see how far we got it, how low we could get um, before we burned through it. Haven't burned through it or anything like that, so that's the good news bring it back inside and i went down even lower and this time we blocked it the first time we used the da definitely recommend to use the da when it comes to sanding out scratches definitely use a no i definitely rec recommend to use a block than to use a da so we got a thousand grit yes we got pretty low now 
we honestly rolled it in here so that we could just go ahead and paint it. We was just gonna go ahead and paint the panels that got hit. But then I'm like, man, let me give it a shot one more time. I had to get on YouTube like, hey, how do you, how do you uh, get these scratches out? <laughs> So I seen one more video. I'm like, okay, that gave me a little bit of thrust of motivation. So let's give it a shot. So with some deep scratches up there, I'll cut y'all back on if uh, if we get this out really, really good, pretty good. So you, as you can see, you can kind of see them there. So let's go ahead and grab a rag, a little dab of water. And all we're doing is just wiping it down just to kind of see, uh, damn. <laughs> God. I thought I was getting it. <laughs> you can still read it. <laughs> like, damn. So, yeah, we might we might end up having to go ahead and paint because we don't want to see it at all. We don't want to see it at all. The job isn't complete. Now, this is an insurance job, so it's like it got to be it got to be done right. So, um, I don't really see that it's still, it's white, like it's through the paint. So what we'll do is just keep, keep blocking it until it comes out. If it don't come out, if we end up burning through, then yeah, we're gonna have to paint it, unfortunately. So let's get it. Yeah. Get to work. <laughs> that was that I'm talking shit smile, or I was talking shit smile. You always talking shit. Anyway, man, uh, it's a beautiful car. It's a beautiful color, but y'all know me. I hate reworking. Rework. Oh, this is this will slow. This will. Uh, a lot of body shops know when a, when a car has to come back. It's like, oh my gosh. But it's like kind of on. It's on a body shop. It ain't the customer. It's just. It just happens. So, the car got sent out, and uh, we got a lot of compounding. What? I'm talking. <laughs> what man? Hey, you got your fans rolling. What you mean? I got my fans rolling. My fans? About what? YouTube. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> e e e yeah, you're wasting time. Anyways, look at the cracks right here. Um, I should've yeah. What? <laughs> he talking shit, man. Anyways, very, very minor stuff. Uh yeah, yeah. We gotta clean up these cracks in here. Um this is something we should have caught. What? Huh? huh? Man, dang, I'm trying to work. Yeah, so anyways, these these cracks should have been cleaned up, man. So basically, what we did was move fast, move too fast. And we got it sanded. We got it all flat and stuff like that. We just didn't get fold that DA, I mean, fold that sandpaper and get in that crack and get it all smooth and whatnot. So... Um, that's something we're gonna have to touch up on and then when it ain't ah oh, man somebody's calling me hold on these are like you know these are the ma minor major and minor mistakes that you know uh that comes with building these cars um we gotta look at this look at this uh this side now i really didn't want to tamper with the interior um hey since you're talking about mistakes you said steaks yeah, what about them? What mistake? What? Right here. You're you're the mistake? Yeah, it is. Yeah, you're slowing everything down. You're right. <laughs> Great mistake. Anyways, um, yeah, this door it's not closing properly due to the panel. Now I played with this door for about two hours. And and this was putting it on. This is adjusting, taking it off, adjusting it, putting it off, taking it off. What? He don't even know. His check is just getting smaller and smaller. Hey, I ain't it ain't no that. easy way. You want me to tell you? You burn through it. Yeah. Oh, my God. Let me see, bro. I touched it, dog. Let me see. I don't want them to see. Let me see. Nah, man. Let me see. Turn them off. All right, it's off. Turn them off. All right, I got it. All right, it's off. <laughs> I'm not cutting this off. I, I, I touched it up, and I'm going to wet sand it out. But, yeah. What the? <laughs> God damn. 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 What do you do? What you do? Lay lacquer thinner on it and no. then sand it with 80 grit? You said you turned them off. <laughs> bro, what the <laughs> hell is that? <laughs> yeah, bro, we're done. Shut this shit down. Bro, what the hell? Bro, why you do that? Why you? 
my my daughter looked like she came in here and did that, bro. What the hell are you doing? Are you? <laughs> oh my god, bro. That's me when I first started at a job, coming from washing trucks. <sighs> Painted the fender, we slapped it on, and uh, yeah, we kind of all the way around with the video. We had to go go to Texas to. I mean, uh, where did we go? Kansas. Bro, Damn. bro, you you might as well just sand that shit down and just and paint the whole thing. Leave me alone. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Look at this, man! Look at this. Anyway, we got some work to do today. We finished the dodge. The dodge is done. Um, had to paint the doors. We could not get the scratches out for nothing. Um. Got a little bit of overspray. We gotta. Hey, oh, that is overspray. So, a little bit of overspray. Got to some scratches. Painted the frame. Looking all good. Woo! Painted both these doors. They haven't been color sanded and buffed yet. But it damn near came out flawless. So, and then we got the hood. Got the hood. Painted the hood. That's completed. Gotta slow down on the masking. Gotta slow down on the masking, man. These are the mistakes that you will have if you move in. I ain't even gonna say you gotta be. You can't move too fast, and you gotta be extremely careful, man. These are the these are the behind the scenes like flaws that come with it. Not every job is perfect, but um. There's a lot of jobs where you gotta blame yourself. You gotta blame yourself. Overspray. Not cool. Cause guess what we have to take the time out to do? Uh, is clean up. Uh, easy fix, but it's time consuming. Easy fix. So we'll hit this with some 3000. We'll have to, you know, mask off from here, mask off from there. Um, hit it with the 3000. And then, uh, you know, do our thing. It's frustrating. Let's come with it, man. Gotta gotta take our time on the masking. Gotta take our time on uh, preparation. Preparation is very important. Ooh, we about got stung in the face. Preparation is very important for these situations. Is it an easy fix? Absolutely. Is it a timeful, wasteful um, situation? Yes, because now I gotta spend an extra maybe two hours on just detailing it because of mistakes. Um, got a compound. Got a compound and buff it and whatnot. If I properly masked it, then I wouldn't have. I, if you spend that extra 30 minutes on doing it right, you won't have to spend the extra two hours on repairing the stuff. Now, like I said, it's not a it's not a situation where we, you know, are like asked out or nothing like that. But it's overspray. You see all the overspray right here. Overspray, overspray. Not cool. I hate it. I hate it. So got to take our but. This is, this is, in another way to avoid this, we could have done it, um, taking it, r and it, taking it off and debadging it, take the handles off, take the mirrors off, take everything completely apart um, and take the, you know, take the door off the car and take the door panel off, the door panel got to come off regardless and take it all the way off and spray it and then carefully put it back on and assemble the car all the way. Is why I wouldn't, uh, why sometimes I don't, like, whether or not I'm doing an insurance job, um, if I'm doing an insurance job, then yeah, it'd be like that. This is an insurance job, but this is a situation where I'm not adding the hours uh, that it takes to, uh, you know, literally do it the, the way we would want to do it. Um, it's just, that's, that's a lot of work. <laughs> that's a lot of time, a lot of work. Customer don't, you rather just, he damn near didn't even want the car touched. So he's just like, yo, just I don't even care anymore. Just just try to color sand and buff it out. I'm like, all right, cool. And if it didn't come out, then we were just told him we was just gonna paint it. So and we went ahead and painted it. Just these are the results that you might get if you're not masking up properly or carefully and not taking the doors off. So um yeah, like I said, it's an insurance job, but we just um the hours that we it would have took 
to take this door off and disassemble it, disassemble it. We didn't put those on on record because yeah, we knew we didn't even want to do that. Now you can finesse. Now, not saying do it, and I'm not saying don't do it. You can finesse. You can put them hours down. You can definitely put them hours down and just mask that door up and spray it and send it at about and make your make your five hour job into a a 30 minute job hey do you i'm not telling you what to do now i'm not telling you i'm not doing it and i'm not telling you i'm doing it <laughs> but uh yeah well it's stuff like this that will throw those type of financial blessings off it's not a biggie it's not him it's us gotta slow down man gotta slow down i don't want nothing back i don't uh, when the moment something come back it's not even you ain't make no money on it came back every car that might sit here might be 50 dollars, 45 dollars a day for just if if we can't touch it because we're waiting on funds that's that's a blessing man I, I wouldn't operate like that this is ready for the camaro painted defender um and now we even now we can uh We'll knock this out. We're gonna jump on this one sometime. I think I think I think we got a schedule for like Tuesday. And we'll have to yeah, yeah. We'll clean it out. We'll take this trim piece back off. And we're gonna have to get fold our sandpaper. That sucks, man. That 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 really does. It pisses me off not catching that. And this is one of those learning situations. It's like, damn, like, cause typically I, I don't I don't even be thinking I'd be either doing that, even doing that folding the sandpaper in there and getting it all smooth but and then my brother did say he was like yo like because it's crazy you would think we didn't take it take it off but there's a lip there's a lip in there that this bites on um my brother was like i ain't gonna lie i thought that chrome piece covers it up <laughs> i thought it did too shit but nah man you gotta we gotta slow our slow ourselves down so now it's like now I, i'll write it down like okay we charged x y and z but on those old schools, on them El Caminos, they got that lip. We got to count for that. That that takes that's gonna take about a good hour, getting it good and flat and cleaned and flushed. Might even have to wipe. Oh, okay. All right. Um. See, hold on. Yeah. So we we'll sand it. We gotta sand it out and um, adjust this door. I like I said, I didn't want to tamper with it because. I don't I don't like tampering with anybody else's work. But what I would have to do is actually um position to do position the door how I wanted it to make it flush and even with the quarter and that front fender. But when I did that, this panel was was uh biting up against all of this. It was just touching all of that. And then I was like, nah, I'm not even going that ain't my work, I don't wanna do that. Um uh, yeah. But it, you know, it's it's got to be done. So I'm gonna have to un take that panel off. I'll I'll shut the door, position it where I want it to be, tighten it up uh, once I, when I open it, and then we'll put the panel on where it's you know suitable at. So yeah, don't like that. But other than that, we rolling, man. Getting this bad boy done. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Bro, like a little kid, man. <laughs> he gonna make a mistake and then try to dab over it, try to hide it, man. How the hell are you, bro? <laughs> nah, that, this is this is. I hate running. This is why when I some some painters will run run a panel and be like, ah, damn, okay, color sand and buff. I don't like that. I like I, when I'm painted, I want to be done with it. Like I do not want to have to fix nothing or re. And I only feel like that now because it's like I'm moving in an hourly manner, like an hour, like I'm charging hourly. So if if I gotta spend any more hours on it, like yeah, it's 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 cool. No, it's great. But in a sense, you do gotta get it out of there. You gotta, you know what I'm saying? But when you have mistakes on something that's not hourly, you're not getting paid to. Re <laughs> it hit different. It's like ah, oh, bro, more time. Um, it's why I'm big on uh, making sure that we don't make no mistakes on, the, on none of these classics, uh, because um, now that's and that now that's a uh, that can be also a slippery slope because it's like it's not fair to charge somebody for your mistakes. But 
Um, it's some it's some things that that aren't really controlled in a sense. I'm over here sitting like like I gotta let it warm up. Like it's an old school. It ain't even cold outside. Uh, but it's yeah, it's some mistakes that happen that are that just that just happen. You know what I'm saying? It's it's uncontrollable, uh, uncontrolled uh, mistakes. Like you might have some, you might do everything right, and the paint just might fry up one day. I don't know. You got you got a a mechanic shop down, and just enough wind and just enough chemical flew right into your shop. You never know. Like, those are did that lock? Oh, yeah. Those are minor things, you know, that can that can happen. So not saying like, oh, I I dropped a panel, I gotta respray it. Oh, I'm really I'm about to charge him hourly. But typically with an insurance job, um, those are what those extra hours are on there for. Like you got, you got under like miscellaneous, like those might, the, the miscellaneous hours might cover up, uh, might take care of, uh, those situations. So, you know, yeah, man, we got to get back. I got a lot of cleaning to do. We had, a, we painted a few things last night and I just hate clutter. So between me and my brother, we didn't try to. Try to keep the shop clean and try to uh, continue to push these cars out with quality. But like that, I got to spend about two hours on cleaning that up. That might be a six-hour job. Um, that's un that's not getting paid because of my mistakes. So, and those are throw off a whole week. Those are one. If I got to spend time on something that wasn't originally on the schedule, I got to squeeze it in. That's why sometimes I work the weekends. Um, this is a situation where I'm gonna have to work on the weekend. Cause it, that that shit that should take time, especially on a on a candy. It's like damn, like I ain't worried about fixing it. It's just now it's wasting time. I'm wasting time. I got other people that's on the schedule. I got other people cars that got to be touched sometime throughout that week. And if I'm like you upset because I gotta push your car back, imagine how I feel. I'm working on some free shit. I'm working on yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, we gonna handle it. We gotta keep our chin up, you know and. And uh, still count every day as a blessing. This is another learning learning experience. So it's another another lesson. So we not we not really we can't we can sit here and complain about it, or we can uh, move forward, move forward, and and move move differently. You know. So wipe this truck down, get it detailed, and be ready to go. It's an interesting job over here. <sighs> Might have showed y'all this one definitely ain't nothing i can't i typically on projects like these i don't even put on my channel so don't look at it like me so you got it yeah i got it this ain't nothing we knocked this out of the bag we did an infinity much worse much worse um later down the line we'll probably get a flight uh what you call it um a frame machine we've been looking at some shops i'm not gonna lie but still got a still got a budget and still got a we ain't got it like that uh <laughs> But somebody did ask me if I was getting a rotisserie. Absolutely. I, we we're actually waiting on it. We we're waiting on a rotisserie. So um, as in like, you know, we, we put our little bread down for it and uh, it'll be here probably within the next few weeks. So, um, yeah, insurance job is, you know, taking everything off and everything that was taken off. You uh, get those parts. Right, make your list on everything you need. Literally everything you need. Everything that was scratched, hurt, damaged, damaged whatever the case is. Get it all documented. Get it priced up. Call the dealership. Call the Nissan dealership and get all OEM parts and yep. Mm -hmm, run it up. And then, you know, work your magic. <laughs> but um, yeah, it may, basically, basically it's just really just pulling off and putting installing. So few internal things that we got to redo a tie rod i mean uh the tie rod has all been tore up so new wheel new tire uh yeah yeah so hopefully the insurance they uh, you know they rock with us so on that <laughs>
when you're dealing with overspray, I typically use a razor blade and soap and water. It will not scratch the glass unless you just dig and hit it at the wrong angle. But initially, you keep that blade flat, just scrape the window, soap and water. It literally won't leave anything on the glass. So real smooth all the way around. No scratches inside or out that you can see. Now with the overspray on the plastic, um, if it's metal, you can use some reducer. I, I initially, I don't like using, um, I don't like using any type of chemicals that's extremely strong. Alcohol is not gonna do it. Um, lacquer thinner is a bit too strong. I like to use reducer. You can use reducer, get it off the metal. And then if it's plastic, um, you can use a little bit of uh, compound on it. And then uh, get your compound pad, rub it in there. It is plastic. You don't want to heat it up. You don't need to get it too hot or anything like that. And then we're good. This is magnificent. This is the best $300, $350 I would have spent. But um, they had it on sale for a lot cheaper than that. Hell, the DAs that we got, they're like $375 uh, if they're not on sale. And we had a, a caught in and major, major sale. So we didn't have to spend that. So great investment. Great investment. Right. Let's keep going. We got... Just pretty much compound and buffed. Well, compound. And yeah, compound buff, whatever you want to say. We did the headlights too. Now, initially, if your headlights are really foggy and look bad, you can actually just compound it. But in some cases, they're really bad, too bad to where it doesn't make a difference. Uh, you can clear over them. You just literally mask them up, scuff, uh, you know, scuff it up with some scotch right lightly, and then um, clear right over and they'll look brand new if the compound ain't working. Clearing off overspray, you can do extreme damage if you're not being careful, um, cause I've done it. <laughs> I've had to buy some headlights and I've had to repaint some things and I had to rebuff some things and figured it out. <laughs> so with glass, if you get that overspray, use your razor, you can use soap and water razor blade on the outside. If you have window tint, do not touch that razor blade up against that tent. I've done that before. Um, if it's if it's on the tent, man, you you pretty much assed out. I'm not gonna lie, because I had no nah, no 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 no. You're not because I've used the reducer and it didn't it didn't uh, it didn't tamper with the clear. I mean with the window tent. That's if you get the paint on the inside. Now if you get on the outside, you good. Just be careful with that razor blade. Um, yeah, on a tent, I use the reducer as well. Reducer isn't as strong as lacquer thinner. If you put lacquer thinner on that window tent, I think it's gonna eat through. Same thing with plastics. Uh, just use some reducer. It's not as it's not as tough. Um, headlights look good. Front end looks good. We got the overspray off on this. Uh, yeah, just be careful. And when you do the reducer on the window tent. Do not play around with the time. Just wipe it on there. Use your second rag. Wipe it off. Wipe it on there. Wipe it off. Don't let it sit on there. I wouldn't even let the, uh, the lacquer thinner. I wouldn't even let the reducer sit on the plastic. It's a chemical. So eventually it can irritate. It can irritate that plastic and really start eating through it. Now, when you compounding, that's that's a cut. This is cutting. It's cutting. It's not cutting like wet sandpaper, but it's cutting. Now, because there's another step that goes after this that makes it a little bit, a lot smoother and a lot cleaner. I could finish this off at compound and just wipe it down and be like, okay, it's done. And, and you wouldn't notice. You wouldn't notice. I notice because I know there's two more steps that go after this. But I could literally get away with, I could for sure get away with it. Like, look, I mean, it's, it's 10 times, it's shinier than it was before. But when you are getting paid hourly, you're going to be so excited and you're just going to do it right. You're just going to be like, you know what? I, I, I am getting paid for what I'm doing. I would like to do it the right way. I would like to go ahead and and make this 10 times shinier than what it is, or at least, you know, two times, be realistic, two times shinier than what it is. I'll go ahead and polish it. I'll go ahead and, 
you know, and um, take that extra step of making it even cleaner and giving it as top quality as I could give it. Those are the those are the benefits of um, somebody dropping their car. It can be some of the benefits of somebody dropping their car off at a shop that's, you know, doing detailing or customizing at an hourly rate because they might want to go ahead and put that little extra ah into it to make sure that you get 110 percent. It's nothing better than getting food where somebody put their soul into it. They 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 put oh, they want somebody to kind of just do something together to satisfy you or you want somebody to put their soul into something to satisfy you. I bet you it's going to be a difference, you know. But um, but yeah, this is this is um, uh, this that's just an example. I'm not speaking on this this truck, but honestly, I mean, I'm I'm getting paid hourly on it, so I could go ahead and just whoop wow, wham, you know. But uh, this is my brother truck, so we um we made we we made some adjustments. <laughs> so uh, that's just we're gonna leave it like that. He gonna be good with it. He damn near didn't even want us to paint it. He was like, man, y'all ain't gonna paint it, though. And I'm like, nah, man, let's do, we gotta do something. We gotta cover these words up. So, uh, yeah, let's keep going. We got this fender done. Oh, no, we did not. I am gonna polish this. I am gonna do that. The chrome? No, I'm not. But this right here, up here, yeah. We're gonna keep going to the next step because you can, the goal is to get it to where when people drop their cars off, well, let's, let's, let's slow down. If we gotta paint a panel, I typically like to compound and buff, like do a blend. That way you you don't see that dramatic difference from what was painted and what wasn't. Because if you decide to sell, sell the car and the right person look at it, they're gonna be like, man, these car, this car been painted before. What was wrong with it? What happened? And there goes your value. So this is a newer truck. He does wanna get rid of it. I told him, let me get it. Like, hey man, let me, let me get it. Then he told me them payments. It's like, ooh, <laughs> I like, I love my truck because it's paid off. <laughs> Ain't nothing, not, not a Rolls Royce, nothing look better than my truck. <laughs> yeah. I keep forgetting this ain't no DA. <laughs> the thing is a beast. So, y'all, all right, we'll get the overspray off right here. I did say we was gonna have to use 3000 grit, but we ain't gotta use that. We can just use uh, the compound. The compound is, that's why I said it's cutting. So where, where's our overspray at? There you go, see that? Yeah, it's a no-go. Let's open this door. We ain't about to burn my fresh paint. It should probably slide right off. So we got a compound 3M. This this work magic. Give it a good shake. Go ahead. I can't use both hands, so that should be good. Now let's get it. Keep that bad boy flat. This is not a DA, so I gotta slow it down. Take my time with it before rub it in there. Spray is gone. Good. I'm gonna go ahead and keep compounding this door. I see some old scratches from when we was color sanding it, attempting to get the old scratches out. So 
uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep moving forward and then we'll get the overspray off the glass, overspray off the glass, and then we'll roll this bad boy up to the front because it should be ready. Got a fresh razor blade. I like to get a new blade per window because it will dole it. Um, well, at least every two windows. You can actually tell where where I missed it. So um, you don't necessarily need the water. Now, if you have water and soap and water, then cool. But uh, of course, when it's wet, you guys know how it is when it's wet. <laughs> take that shit however you want to take it. Anyways, yeah. Right now, we didn't, I'm not about to go grab some water. Look at that. Just kind of zoom out. Spike the camera. There we go. Oh, damn. You fly. Anyway. Ah. Just kind of, we got everything buffed. We got everything uh, compound. Now we're getting ready to go ahead and get some polish. We'll use the second step. Got all the overspray off, at least what we saw until we pull it out in the sun. That'll really tell you. All right, so we painted the hood, we didn't paint the fender. Now that we got this second, this is what the second step does. So second step is gonna bring that, that major Basically, it's gonna mess with the color. It's almost gonna mess. It ain't gonna literally mess with the color, but it's gonna damn near get it like if we painted it. So, this is the second step. Got my big boy, my black pad on my Dewalt. Um, now, the reason I'm using my my big boy because we do got the we do got the black pads in this in the little small little mini DA that I had. But I knew that I was gonna hit all the panels with uh, the polish, so we're hitting it up right now. I don't have to hit the, the painted area. Um, of course, we're gonna wipe down what it might have nicked, but get this all wiped down. Got the overspray off the glass. Wipe all of this on. So yeah, so we're doing all of this just because we did not do the proper preparation to paint these doors and this is uh yeah it's, it's time being wasted when you don't do it right so it's a saying slow down and speed up slow down do it right so you don't have to fix anything if you slow down and take your time to do it right you won't have rework you won't have the vehicle come back so go ahead and spend that extra 20 minutes 10 minutes five minutes to make sure that it's, it's flawless. That way you don't create more problems for yourself. So I need to practice what I preach. So uh, that's what we're gonna be doing. Anyways, let's keep going. All right, see the difference between the two panels right here to the right and left? Hey, I'm getting paid to teach. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, what? Huh? <laughs> he said, what my cut? Uh, yeah, see the difference? We're gonna take care of that. I'm gonna finish that front panel and then we'll hop over here. We'll cut y'all back off. Boom, bop, bing, ta -da. That's how you do it. There you go. Yeah, make sure you put the before and after on that shit. <laughs> I don't have any before and after. Nah, so I feel it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. My bad, bro, bro. I had to cut the camera. You good, bro? <laughs> My bad. I was trying to be dramatic. You good? Let me see. Oh, I'm hurt. Oh, my neck. My back. My neck and my back. Oh, I want 150000 But we can set out of court right now for 20 bucks. Man, get your ass up. Man, no. Nah. Bro, my, I what thought I took that. Him. I thought I took his arm off, bro. My, we, we ain't got workers comp, bro. And now we keep this some scrap metal. You good? Let me see. Let me see your elbow, man. Yeah, Felt like I gashed yeah, you good. Man. But just know, <laughs> I got some of your head. <laughs> <laughs> nah, this how it was before. Oh, yes, Judge. He did it. <laughs> yeah, so she said a pole smacked her. 
but we all know she smacked the pole. No, I'm just playing. I don't know. Oh, trying to forget that boy. Oh, ain't nothing we can really save. But besides that Chevy emblem, but hey, she, hey man, she good to go. She good to go. Oh, we got clips and pieces. Yeah, we can use all of that. Yeah. Dang, man. Ooh, that paint job got Amy Kali. Yeah, Surprisingly. Shut up. That dude, Brandon. What's his name? Bezo? Hey, Bezo. Get all right. Ooh, for some Very reason, that color match is really great. Uh, oh, it's he's all right. He's all right. Now I got to get to it. This is about done. He stopped me. Let's get to it. Okay. Take a good look. Here we go. Okay. How we looking? We damn near there. Right on. No, nah, we there. We there. That color is there. Good. I think we are done. Oh no, the tailgate. Let's do the tailgate. And we got some overspray on that top panel underneath the light. So, and then that's that. Color looks good, no haziness, no blotchiness or nothing like that. Um, hood looks phenomenal. We did paint the hood, we didn't paint the fender. So, yeah. Came by and looked at it and said, don't worry about the color sand and buff. That's how we want it to be. Uh -oh. There we go, see that? Got it. Gotta look at those angles. Gotta look at the angles. So we did not color sand this hood. It came out so flat and so clean. Um, no marks, no nothing. Came out phenomenal. That's how we want every job to be. Um, we didn't paint the bed. We just did a little coat over it. Just, just did a little coat over it of the compound and polish and finish. Didn't touch the bed. We did. Y'all know what door I painted? Can y'all tell what door I painted? I did them both. Painted both doors. <sighs> we hardly put any paint. We didn't even put an ounce of paint on here total. We didn't put hardly any paint on here, so. Been a pretty long day. Uh, got the Dodge Ram parked out front for pickup. This one's getting detailed to get ready for pickup. This was a uh, front end and pretty much whole front end headlight and then the front fender. So yeah, looking good. at it all day uh yesterday we spray no day before i can't remember hell my days are i just got one big day one big long life that's my day anyways we're gonna, we're gonna oh no we gotta turn this bad boy around turn it around we're gonna degrease all of this get it all cleaned up shoot it black we're gonna do a lot of masking gotta do a lot of masking so we're gonna tighten up we're gonna tighten up we're gonna take our time we're gonna do it right even though this is not hourly, we're going to just, it's here, it's here. So if it's already here, just go ahead and bite the bullet, do it right. And the next few cars that come in, we're going to make sure we get paid. For <laughs> nah, anyways, uh, it ain't always about the money, but when you are trying to build something, you're going to need finances. So um, we're going to do what we can. Let's continue. Let's knock this, let's knock this out.
All right, doing my second coat of the waxing, well, not waxing grease, but just pure grease remover. No, it is. I think it is waxing grease remover, but it's more of a degreaser. And this, this is, this works amazing. Like you would think I scrubbed it after. That's why I hit it twice. First time it damn near get it all off. But this would just kind of guarantee it. Like, all right, let's just really double check. And then we'll just adhesion promote everything. And then, uh, shoot, we'll be good to go. But I effed up. I should have prioritized. I should have made sure I power washed this early this morning. And now we running out of daylight. Uh, we still probably got a few hours left, but I would have guaranteed a good dry. Uh, it would have been dry by the time I would have, because I could have sprayed it tonight. But um, let me get ready to leave within the next hour or two. Get that real good. And then, shoot, we'll roll it out in the sun. Well, no, we'll leave it right here. I'm going to start the body work on, on the shell. My brother and my guys in there is working on the bed. So, yo, yo, let's, let's keep moving. All right, man. Uh, right now, we're just disassembling, disassembling everything we can off the firewall that's not, um, that doesn't involve, like, moving a motor or anything like that. So, uh, <laughs> we're just going to take off our, our windshield wiper motor. Um, we got our wire harness kit. We got some um, flex loop. Uh, what's it called? Flex? Flex something. I don't know. We'll take this off. Move it back. We'll shove everything forward of the vehicle as much as we can. And then we'll mask up the wires. We'll mask up everything. We'll shove our paper. Um, yeah, we'll shove the paper. I don't want to do plastic. Cause the engine bay is going red so we have to really take our time with this one just so um we get a good clean finish we power washed it we do uh wax and grease removed it really good took our time with that and now we'll be disconnecting um what we can sliding everything forward like this right here this is going to need to come off it looks like it's probably screwed in there this is weird might just pull off but i don't want to yank it We'll just play around with it, see if there's a screw on the back side. It is, you can see. So, looks like maybe it's like a rubber boot. Um, so we'll be careful with that. We take our pictures before we even touch anything. We'll get our videos before we even touch anything. That way, when it comes to the assembling process, we know exactly where everything was. So, and then we'll run our tape line all the way around as far as we can. Um, this truck isn't lifted like the last C10 was, so this is going to be a lot more smoother, easier. We were fighting, um, trying to get back down back in there. So, all right, man, I'll uh, probably cut y'all on once we get a little far. I'm trying to hurry and beat the daylight, uh, beat nighttime, really. Uh, let's get it. Once you get your three bolts out, you're going to have this one big bolt or nut in the back. Be careful with it. It's a half inch. I should just yeah. it's been on there for a while now, so take that off. Oh, don't lose that. Do not lose that, cause that's like your spacer. So that will go right there, like that. Okay, let's keep going. We got a nut right there. That's how you get mm, probably 90% of your uh, wire harnesses off. It's going to be holding on by a bolt. So. Might, be a, might be a 10. But this is a 9. So. Yeah, it's going to be a 10. Got ourselves a 10 right there. She's a baddie. All right, let's keep going. So we got our harness off, and it's just by one wire. And uh, yeah, I went ahead and made my point A to point A. We're gonna go ahead and cut it. <clears throat> and then we'll add our uh, connectors when we when we put them together. Uh, only reason we wanted to do that was because if I'm gonna do it, mask up that one little that one little uh, wire, I might as well just mask up the whole thing so if i'm gonna have to mask i'd rather just uh do it all the way or we're gonna just disconnect that one so we can't lose that one because we know that 
that one is to the dad. So, all right, everything else we can tuck. Now, this one, yeah, unfortunately, I am going to have to mask it because that's all the way up, and that is to the, the latch. And with it being just that one solid, tough one, it's cool. It's fine. We'll mask this up, cover that up. We'll cover all of our connectors. We'll cover all of... Um, we'll even cut that one. Well, no, this was already off, so... Um, and watch me work. Nah. Look how fast that sun is moving. It's been like 15 minutes, barely that. Um, we'll take that one off. And then uh, we'll take our two-inch masking tape. And we'll wrap this up. The problem is you got too much water in the terminator. You need to turn the terminator on. <laughs> <laughs> or you need to turn the old Brian get on. Your carburetor. <laughs> then you get your carburetor. And you want to clean it out real good. And then once you clean it out, you want to get your brake pads and carburetor. <laughs> hey, I ain't gonna cap. Do you think it'll be dope red or this this uh the engine bay red or tan? I ain't gonna cap. I think so. The truck is gonna be tan. The whole outside of the truck is gonna be tan. But when you pop the hood, you're supposed to get slapped in the face with some red. Now, I ain't gonna lie, I think the tan would hit harder. I think it'd just be so different. I feel like I seen a red engine bay. I don't know who who, who knows, but we can do so many red cars. I don't even want to see no more red. So, uh, yeah, we're just gonna keep going. We'll take that off. I gotta play with that first. I'm not even about to tamper with that with this camera in my hand. So, let's get to it. All right, man. Uh, frame is going black. The firewall is going red, and the brake calibers are going red. I'm gonna go ahead and do the brake calibers since we already this far. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and start adhesion promote. Got three coats of adhesion promoter on there. We're gonna hit the brake collar. I got my fan not all the way open, but not all the way closed. It's directly in the middle um, so that I can get those good angles, those little pockets. Um, pressures, I, I, I couldn't tell you exactly. I don't have a gauge on here, but I can hear it. It's probably somewhere around 23 to about 26 PSI. I want more air than fluid because it's. I want. I don't want to run it. And I want to get in those creases and pockets really good. So if you set the air just right, fluid right, fan right, you'll be good. Um, I don't have any sealer. I wish I would have had gray sealer, um, which is basically a base coat over this black. Um, so that I could only, I would only have to hit about two coats and damn near be all the way red. But since I'm painting this red over black, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. It's probably going to take four or five coats. Um, I'm, I'm not about to, store's closed, it's late. Uh, so we're just gonna make it work and we're gonna pile that red up until it until we have a bright red. So let's get it. We're doing a firewall and then we're doing a brakes first and then we'll let that dry and then we'll dial our gun down and fluid and fan down 
damn near little to nothing will airbrush the black on. Um, I don't have time to fully think about how exactly I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the red first and then do the black and hopefully it makes sense at the end. Let's get it. Cover the back side of that hole over there. I need to get this one. All right, so what I'm gonna basically do is dim there, pack it on. I'm not gonna spray it heavy. Uh, break. Time for the clear coat. I think we laid it down pretty good in there. Two coats of black, two coats of red. No, it's actually uh, three coats of red, and it wasn't as bad as I uh, remembered. I thought it was. I thought I was gonna have to hit it like four or five times. It covered pretty good. So, time for some clear coat. The reason we're not doing this right here is because it's going tan. So, yeah, man. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take my red, load my red back up, mash this off, clean this up. I had a little little cheater, I had a little cheater right here. So this was my little my little guide. I really wasn't about to sit here and mask, 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 and I man, I'm pretty good. I used to paint planes. I used to mask up the wheel wheels in the plane. So yeah, I, I'm pretty decent. So shoot, I'm gonna touch up that spot and then I'll probably hit a little bit more in this pocket but um other than that we got pretty deep in there so she gonna look good
All right, man, we, uh, we're finished with the suspension. I mean, only thing left I gotta do is just paint the drums. I'm gonna paint the drums red. Uh, I should have done it all together, but it was just one of those things. What can I do to, you know, what can I complete by the end of the night? And I had just enough energy to just do what I just did just now. It's been a long day. Been up since about four. It's about 11. We got quite a bit of work done off camera. And of course, I try to do as much as I can on camera. So check us out. How you feeling? Uh, with the engine bay and suspension. I know the video is kind of all over the place, but it's kind of documenting how today went. Uh, yeah, man. Y'all stay tuned. Shoot. Hit the subscribe button. Like I said, we got the 8555 Ebony Black. I'm going to answer some questions right quick. 8555 Ebony Black. Get about two or three coats of the black. And then, uh, but before we actually did that to prevent from sanding it, we hit it with the adhesion promoter. Uh, ah, adhesion promoter. Get a couple coats on that. And then we hit it with the black, hit it with about two coats of clear, two or three coats of clear, and then proceeded to pick up where we could see the frame. Shot it, same color, Ebony, Ebony, ah, Ebony 8555. <laughs> My bad, I'm tired, we all over the place. Uh, that's a Chevy red, that is an expensive red, that's not a victor victory red. That is like the 2019 Chevy Camaro red, as well as um, the 2014 Chevy Red, it's the same red. They all have the same red. So we, of course we went Chevy, it's the C10. Um, came out great though. I think it's gonna look amazing once you, uh, now the car is going desert tan. So uh, frame is black. The engine bay is the only thing that'll probably be, you no, know, yeah, the engine bay red. And then we're gonna figure out the interior pieces, whether or not this is gonna be just tan. Uh, we're gonna go right here straight up not the roof um and then the dash i gotta i gotta play with some play with some colors um and then chop it up with the customer so y'all stay tuned man i water and no i use my db1 actually to clear it so as y'all seen that was my db1 i based it with the with the uh the sada 5500 uh yeah man how we looking we'll pick back up on it probably uh, tomorrow. Yeah, we'll pick back up on it tomorrow with a different video. Y'all make sure you like, comment, subscribe, man. Feel free to leave a comment. We out of here.